The Bright Path, Ascension Meditation. I'm in a scene, Jesus Christ was in a scene, Mary and Joseph were in scenes, so I know a little bit about meditating. That's how Christ worked his magic, was it's not magic, it's just energy, everything's energy, and you work the energy, we're called light workers. So I've been studying like this for over 20 years, and then I found Drapaudi, who explained to me that there's another form of meditation that I should look into, and it's, it's for ascending. It's to help us ascend, rise in vibration. Uh, and it's very simple, so I decided to try it because my, my Essene meditation is very in-depth, but this is a very simple thing that I can still go to every now and again. I mean, you're supposed to do it every day. I try to, but I don't always succeed. But at the very least, when you really need it, you can just pull this out real quick and knock it out in 20 minutes and you are centered and zoned in and ready to rock and roll. You know, the universe always brings you what you need in, in the moment and the perfect teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyways, the, uh, I met the Ashayas probably about two weeks after, you know, this, this amazing experience. And it, it didn't go away. But right when I what, right when I met them, I started coming back out of it again. And it, it, so I kind of feel like they caught me right at that pivotal moment, you know. And I knew within five minutes of meeting them, just the because peace that peace is palpable, you know. It's other people can feel that that sense of peace that you have. And um, and that's what I was feeling with them and sensing. It was like consciousness recognizing itself. And it, I said in that moment, this is what I want. Wow, that's they brilliant. Had. Consciousness recognizing itself. I yeah. Like that. It's good. Yeah, it wasn't very, and I knew right, like, right after I read the, the brochure, um, I knew immediately that that was my path. Yeah, and it's I, really yeah. well written. Whoever did that, it's amazing. It caught me because I, I can see through everything. I can read. I can tell when it's BS or not. And I'm like, whoa, this is like my scene stuff. This is really interesting. So that's why I wanted to do a show with you right away to help spread this out because this is the time to get spiritual, folks. Don't let it all get to you. It's, everything's been planned, but we're going to win. It's already been done. My, my path is fairly simple. I've been meditating for 20 years. I was CEO of a locally based national company, uh, living the American dream. But when I was brutally honest with myself, I just knew there had to be more life than what I was experiencing. And I had this, I went to this deal and a few days later I got this handwritten letter and I saw it piled in with all the other mail and I just took it and sat down and read it. It just hit my heart. My heart lit up. And it was the brochure, same brochure she's talking about. <laughs> and uh, I just knew I had to do it. And I did. And things changed. Life was different. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the, uh, the kingdom of heaven is within. I mean, Pierre Desjardins says we're a spiritual being having a human experience. Yes. And if he changes one word in that, everything changes. Instead of saying we're a spiritual being, you could have said we are the spiritual being having a human experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Meaning we're not separate from the underlying source of all reality. Yes, I love and, that. And that's, and that's real. Yeah. Uh, that's the only thing that's real. That's the only thing. And that's the only thing that exists. And he, he, so how do we experience that? We just look within, because inside of each one of us is a still, silent, open space that goes forever. Right. A place where time and space have no relevance and no existence. Right. A place where fear has no meaning. A place so real and accessible that all we have to do is recognize it. <laughs> 
is because from what I understand, this kind of meditation from the bright path is what Christ taught to his disciples. So I was a, I'm a black belt in martial arts, champion fighter, and uh, always meditated to learn energy and focus. And now I took it to the next level. I thought, who's the best meditator in the world? Probably Buddha and Jesus. So I've been studying what Jesus did, and this is the new stuff that I want to learn about. And what I like most about it, from the little literature I've read on it, is that it teaches you little tricks. So if you have a mind, a thought process, and it's spiraling you down, they can snip that in the bud and get you spiraling up. So uh, I'm really happy to have Jaya here. Jaya uh, has is, I think, one of the top monks of this meditation, which I'm about to learn. Um, and so, yeah, tell me what's going on, Jaya. What What is this all about? Did I nail that right about how Christ taught this to the disciples? Yeah, you did actually. I um I don't actually hear too many people talk about it like that. So I was I was just like so surprised to hear it. Because <laughs> it's one of our it's not like a secret or anything, but I think we've become very practical with our tradition. And so to hear those roots again, I was like, wow, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's what's that's what stimulated me because I mean you put yeah. it Bruce Lee for the kicks and punches and oh some of the God. some of the meditation, but I mean really who could walk on water? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so you know we have been required to go to spain and and study with a teacher for six months it was an intensive it's called the mastery of self course so you're you're basically mastering yourself you're mastering your own mind wow and it's an intensive course um in meditation and with you know other enlightened individuals that are teaching you. Most teachings don't come from a level of enlightenment. So, you know, this information, um, there's, a, there's a purity in this type of um, teaching. And it's a, you know, it's a, uh, there, there's 700, over 700 teachers all over the world, you know. Everybody comes to this practice. I mean, I've been teaching this for over 20 years. So I came to this practice of meditation, the style of practice, um, because I believed I had a purpose in my life and nothing was delivering that. And I didn't know even where to look for it. So that's where I came across this style of meditation and the, these, this practice. Um, I didn't actually think I needed meditation or even understood what it did before that. But I was having a desire to just get more in tune with myself and in my, um, my purpose of life. You know, I really wanted, I was hungry for that. And over these last 20 years, I've heard of so many different reasons why people become open to meditation or, or meditation crosses their path or they're, they're drawn in some mysterious way to, to, to us, actually. Yeah, it's usually kind of horrific. <laughs> are, are yeah. you saying that yours wasn't so you just kind of it was more or less it just happened or did you have some issues too that you needed to tackle? I, I think we all have issues okay. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> i would say yeah i had a relationship breakup that made me start looking and said but actually it made me start questioning and I think there's a lot of questioning going on in the world right now too so this is perfect timing to actually talk about even questioning absolutely it, because when people, and that's what we're finding now, people are starting to just question like um, just ethics and reality and beliefs and even just the things we've, we do and why do we do it? Like the question that going, just because we, we've done it for years and years doesn't mean that it, it's, it's right. And so, but, so this is all great to start questioning, but it's like, well, where are these answers or what actually gives you that satisfaction? And for me, it was, I, I didn't expect it to come out of the style of meditation, but that's where I went. And with this practice, <laughs> I was so lucky, um, this style of meditation takes you directly to source, to, to the source of yourself, to the source of the, the universe, if, you, if people believe that or understand that. So let's, let's start with the source of yourself. And... If you don't believe in a higher vibration or a higher force for good, it doesn't matter because we all, we all yearning to understand ourselves at some level as well. And 
these techniques are designed to actually connect you to that, to, to be present and to, and in being present and in the here and now, which is actually kind of becoming more obvious in these days. That's um, excellent. So what you're saying is this doesn't have to, like in AA, they say you have to know that there's a higher power or, you know, yeah. of yourself. So you're saying you don't, you can still use this. Absolutely. Excellent. Believer, non-believer, atheist, um, your own religion, your own belief. Uh, it, it doesn't matter because if you, ha if you have any sort of desire for just a little bit more good in your life or, or purpose or healing even, the techniques are going to do that by uh, returning your own um, focus to source, to back to the blueprint, back to the beginning, to back to purity. And from there, everything changes because what's happened is we're so mentally conditioned and um, restricted without even knowing it. But to come back to the beginning or come back to purity, all of those restrictions change. So it really is an inward direction first before it becomes an outward direction, like your, your relationship to, to your world. There's a lot of practices out there for meditation. I mean, there's just bookshelves full of it. And somebody's better off doing something rather than not doing anything. And, I mean, I've been doing a number of practices for 20 years. Right. And standing meditation has kind of been an avocation of mine. <laughs> and the key thing with this is that this is a, an effective meditation practice, which is very few of. In other words, it totally circumvents all the mental constructs of the mind and focus on that still silent place within that I talked about earlier. The one that we are. That's the one that we are. And it's, you see, it's my experience and part of the human condition that whatever you focus on manifests more of itself in all areas of your life. In other words, you focus on that, keep going back to that, that will manifest itself more in all areas of your life and that's what that's what we do in that six month course that mm -hmm. consciousness that higher consciousness becomes manifested in us in all areas of our life so yeah. it, it's able to so we're able to communicate that and transmit it to people along with the intellectual understanding that comes with the course it's okay. a, it's our natural birthright to to uh, have our awareness resting in that space that you know that space of peace and does this help you your unconsciousness like we it's our unconscious that sabotages i i apply. right right yeah i mean we all have we all have unconscious um material that's within us um and so the with this practice, there's an open-eyed practice and a closed-eyed practice. The open or the closed-eyed practice, um, in well, let me let me go back a little bit to the the techniques themselves are based on praise, gratitude, love, and compassion, and they're pure statements of truth that uh, circumvent the the limited thinking mind. And it go and it, they take you directly into experience that place of peace. The closed-eyed practice will dissolve the uh, all of the unconscious grooves that we have that we the, that have been formed since birth. And you know, and and they started from simply moving our awareness out here onto our surroundings. You know, when a child comes into the world, um, it, it starts to inter interact with its surroundings and it starts to form little grooves from basically in that, you know, it, when it doesn't get its needs met or, or whatever, <clears throat> little things and big things can cause these grooves. Uh, and then not, not to mention, um, you know, then you have all of the the stuff with siblings and con the competitiveness and, and then school, you know, we all know how school was, you know, all of the, um, the uh, peer groups there was and 
all of the groups that can form there and not to mention that the collective unconscious, the collective beliefs, they're all part of our, that unconscious material. And, um, and then everything we're taught from religion to in it, in 99% of it's all false. <laughs> You know, <laughs> so, you know, when I was, I, I started to realize this early on, probably when I was about 30, you know, that I had to, it was like cleaning out everything that I had learned, you know, and that's what I've been doing um, in meditation is clearing all of that garbage out to, to get up, to get to that place of truth. Yeah. So. So that's what the closed eye practice does. It um, circumvents all of those uh, grooves and takes us back into experience who we truly are in every moment. The story behind it that made it famous was there's a guy that ran a prison in Mexico the worst prison in Mexico. It had the worst amount of kills and just violence. It was the most violent prison in Mexico. And he started teaching the inmates this meditation. And it was so profound that eventually the guards started wanting to learn the meditation. And then the guards' wives wanted to start to learn the meditation. And this prison went from being the most violent, worst prison in the world, or at least in Mexico, to being the least violent. They actually brought it in, um, some of our teachers in Mexico brought it in to, um, to just help the, the violence that was happening in the prisons. So she was teaching the inmates. Um, uh, there was a couple of women going into high security men, male prisons. And um, the inmates were experiencing, they were changing so quickly that then the guards wanted to learn and then the guards' families wanted to learn because the, their husbands or wives coming back from working in the prison had changed. So there was this ripple effect going out because it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what you're doing, what race you are, what religion you believe in, that that connection into into this moment, that connection into source, I keep using the word source because it's, um, it's easy for everyone to understand. Yeah. The, you don't have to believe it to work with these techniques, it just works. So many of these hardcore prisoners were just said, hey, well, this meditation is going to just help you, just, just do it. <laughs> <laughs> so they did it without even caring or wanting, wanting, you know, they still wanted to be, you know, big yeah. staunch guys, yet they're, joy started to come out, their kindness started to spread, their ability to appreciate each other started to happen, the intensity started to tone down, the laughter maybe started to rise, the need to be top dog didn't care anymore. Wow. And so they were living these changes rather than trying to create something or become someone because they weren't trying to be religious or trying to be um, good meditators or good people. They didn't even care about that. But by just doing it, their energy, their energetics, their relationships all changed just naturally. Wow. Proof is in the pudding right there. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm.